there, Sagittarius. This is Raina, and this is a special type of love reading. This is a love reading called Can This Relationship Be Healed? And it's a different type of spread. It's a look into either estranged relationships, maybe your ex with whom you'd like to reunite, or somebody that you're currently involved in a relationship and it is struggling to say the least. And as I've said in other videos with this particular theme, this is not for seriously screwed up relationships where there is physical or emotional abuse happening. Because those types of scenarios require a lot more than just the person agreeing not to do it. The, the person who is engaged in this type of behavior, which is incredibly disruptive and destructive, is likely they have a lot of deeply buried pain that they are inappropriately inflicting upon other people. And they need to deal with that in a very systematic and deep way. They can't just gloss over it and say, oh, I promise I won't do it anymore. That doesn't usually, that probably wouldn't do the trick because I'm talking about serious stuff. I'm not talking about somebody who hurts your feelings now and then because, or says the wrong thing. Because obviously, in, if you've been in a long-term relationship, you know that sometimes one or both parties says things that they don't, that they wish they could take back. We're talking about people who are deliberately trying to undermine the well-being of their partner because they need to feel in control of the relationship. And they do so in different ways that are very upsetting and could be dangerous for that person. So just to, just to kind of uh, clarify that. But one thing that I was mentioning was that infidelity seems to be a really big issue within relationships and that is not necessarily um, a sign that the relationship is doomed. It's It could be that the two parties need to really talk about what happened, why it happened, and in order to move forward and the other party has to want to talk about it. If they don't even want to talk about it, they just want you to go over it then that is going to obviously reflect against, um, you know, poorly on them because the chances of them wanting to really change are not as great. Even if, you know, maybe there are some people that, I was thinking that maybe you're involved with a Scorpio person <clears throat> and not picking on Scorpio, but they tend to be the type to not like to talk about their feelings in a very open way. And this also could apply to somebody with the moon in Scorpio. And that they may, either you catch them or they confess that they had an affair and maybe they won't have any more affairs, but they don't want to talk about it. So it's not that if somebody doesn't want to talk about what they've done, that it means that they're going to do it again. I'm not trying to say that. But I'm, I'm just saying that being able to really explore why it happened can go a long way in healing the situation. And then there's also these regular compatibility issues where the, the two parties just seem to clash about a lot of things. And sometimes I think that they are more um, sexual relationships than they are overall compatible relationships but that's just one theory of mine and so what I'm using here is my regular Morgan Gur deck and I will be doing a spread for that and then pulling one of the what are these called crystal visions tarot cards for the shadow work that you should do um, before I go on, I 
wanted to let you know that all of my private readings are going to be 20% off through the end of 2017. It was really funny because I had been thinking of doing this, but I wasn't really sure if I was going to wait until the new year or what. And uh, I, I did uh, Pisces reading first, and I just said it, almost like blurted it out at the end. And I was like, whoa, I just, I just committed to this. But yeah, so I'm going to be doing that promotion. And the it's, it's until the end of 2017. The coupon code is Jupiter at checkout. So just to let you know. And of course, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm uh, using that as a coupon code because I am a Sagittarius and all of you watching likely are. And the ruling planet of Sagittarius is Jupiter. So there you go. I'm sure you know, knew that. Put that to the side. And I already have shuffled these cards, so I can, um, maybe the first thing I'm going to do is pick three cards. Okay. All right. Okay. Just put these right here. Just trying to gather up these excess cards. I am going to be pulling a couple more. I got them right there. These are my last two cards. I just do a simple cut. Okay. So, looking at the situation that we can we can see with um, the three cards in the top center to describe what is happening in this connection that you have to this person. The Nine of Swords is a card of anxiety. I actually got two nines. And um, it's interesting. Too. I just want to say something about the number nine. Because if you, if you know anything about the, the tarot, it is connected to numerology. And um, that's why certain numbers are assigned to certain cards. Because it, it carries... A certain vibration. Number nine in the Major Arcana is the Hermit card. And it's connected to Virgo, which happens to be the ninth month of September. But the number nine, if that was your life path, if you found out by adding up your date of birth, is a card of the light worker. And so you'll see themes, themes of the number nine dealing with solitude and dealing with wisdom. And um, with the Nine of Swords, it's almost like the wisdom turning on itself, the swords being a weapon. But the swords connect to air signs. So if this is that other person that you're dealing with, it could be a Gemini, which is your opposite sign. And definitely because opposite signs are, you know, the opposition is considered a tense angle, um, you may have these, you may see them even as karmic relationships or twin flame relationships where it's like your complementary signs, you're magnetizing, but polarizing, um, drawn together, but feeling kind of like repelled from one another. And um, with the number nine, or with, I should say, I, I got a little bit distracted with that truck. Um, so that could be the other uh, air sign is, we got um, Gemini, but then there's Libra Aquarius. So that could be the person that you're involved with. But in terms of 
thoughts turning on themselves. This is what worry is. This is what negative self-talk is. That's what I would say that card represents. And um, looking at, at the other things, the other cards, look at the other nine. This is fire energy. So there's more of an aggressive component to it, and it's more, like I would even say, more of a physicality, even though it's not like a pentacles or like the, the physical dimension, but just active and um, aggressive. And it's dealing with the same thing of like your wisdom kind of being almost like a defiance, I would say. Uh, this card represents kind of having your walls up. I've been getting that card, I believe, over and over again. Um, and I suppose in these kinds of troubled relationships, it's no wonder that I would get the same cards coming up because a lot of this, uh, the situations are going to be same old, same old, the, nothing new. The typical reasons why people get into problems. Um, why do I have two nines here? Well, as I said, the number nine relates to wisdom. Oh, and you know, I should have said, Sagittarius is the ninth house. So you see that wisdom element coming into it. <clears throat> and it could be that you know what you really should be doing, but you can't make that move. Like, like in other words, a lot of people, they know that the relationship is no good, but they, they have a, a hard time letting go. The Nine of Swords suggests that you have this sense of maybe negativity with your thoughts, and they could be about your future even, of saying, well, if I leave him, then where does that leave me? And I, you know, I'm sorry to use pronouns, but just um, thinking with the eyes of a woman who's um, thinking of a man, you know. Where would that leave me if I were alone? Sagittarius is a sign that's very independent, male or female. So it's not so much the typical case in point that a Sagittarius person is going to be like this. But everybody is different, and depending upon your background, you may have very strong fears surrounding living a life on your own. You may feel like you need a partner. It, if you don't have one, then it shows that you're not lovable or whatever. Um, or you may truly love this person. This is another thing that I think is very important to convey. If you're with somebody who you know in your heart of hearts is not going to change and who is dragging you down with them, that is, is something that you have to acknowledge. That doesn't mean that, you, that you're saying that you don't love them if you want to leave it, that situation. But you may feel like it's rubbing off on you, their negativity, and you want to be free of it. And then we have the King of Pentacles. And this could, in some cases, this could mean that you're with somebody who is very well off. And that is causing anxieties because um, you feel like, you know, now I'm going to have to stand on my own two feet. I, I don't have this lifestyle that I'm so accustomed uh, to. For other people, this could be the father of your child. And perhaps you feel this sense of um, wanting to have that family life, wanting to have that intact situation going on. And yet... Your walls are up, that nine of wands. You're feeling defensive. You're feeling like um, it's almost like hyper boundaries where the person has hurt you so much that you can't even, be, you know, interact in a normal way with them or maybe with other people. Maybe you've been acting 
very thin skinned lately with um, friends and family. And it's because this, the negative energy of your interaction with that person has rubbed off on your relationship. Um, let's look at the past position. The past position is the high priestess. And this is like that card of like, I know there's something going on. Something is revealed. Somebody's keeping a secret. In some cases, it can be getting back into meditation or some spiritual practice when you kind of like had strayed away from it. But I wanted to say one thing about the King of Pentacles that um, I probably should have said before. This could be that somebody that your partner is trying to control the purse strings to control you. And so you feel this sense of control in, on every level of, of life, and that is eating away at you as well. But that something you feel is going on, now we have as the spiritual message, which in this case may be the actual thing that's happening, is the Three of Cups, which can deal with alcoholism. Um, this is a card, if you just were talking about any particular issue, is about enjoying yourself with friends, socializing, celebrating something. But in this reading, there's too much, there might be too much celebration. Uh, that number three that's involved can indicate that there are, there's a, a lover's triangle or that this person is a womanizer. I can't think of a female equivalent. But um, <coughs> I was just thinking of somebody, one time I think I said man-eater and somebody thought that was funny. But you know what I mean. I mean, um, I'm using, you know, they use, they show the faces of three women. So I'm going to just say womanizer, somebody who can't be faithful. And this could be due to alcohol or whatever intoxicant floats their boat where they let their guard down and they become very um, weak in, in their in their resolve and maybe they even like the the bar scene because they like to just be <clears throat> even if it's not flirting with um, other people they just enjoy that environment of social and the cards that I got for you you may be going through a lot of introspection right now Sagittarius. Of course, Saturn is still in our sign until the end of December, which is the same timeline of this reading ending around the same time. So that could be showing that um, things are changing uh, for you and maybe you'll be get out of your shell. But in the meantime, you may not feel like doing that, and this other person does. For some reason, Pisces came to mind. Pisces is associated with the cups. So if there is a Pisces person in your life who is doing this, um, that I was thinking of that also earlier, um, talking about these these signs that form a square to you, because, you know, uh, Gemini forms an opposition, but... You have uh, Virgo and Pisces forming a square, so there might be this attraction to people like this, but then also a lot of clashing where, where the two people just do not see the world in the same way and that there tends to be a lot of, um, I don't know, antagonism in, in certain areas. <clears throat> this card is uh, what's coming in, or advice. Eight of Cups, leaving what no longer serves you. And it's really, you know, it's not just about leaving a situation. It's about going towards something which is emotionally fulfilling for you. And I think that is the bigger picture, the more important thing. Because it's, it's easy to leave in certain instances, but it's hard to know what to strive for. A lot of, it's, it's amazing. A lot of people 
they want to have um, a happier life, but they don't know what it is that they want out of life. And they're like, well, what do I, you know, what should I try to go for? Because they're just so used to being dictated to, okay, do this, take this, these classes, you know, major in this and, and do this. And it may not be what they really want to do in life. And um, so cultivating that sense of like what it is that you want in, in another person and, uh, and holding out, if you can't find it, don't just like say, well, I can't find my dream person, so this will do until then. And the outcome is the Ace of Pentacles, which as you see, this that portal, that's um, a new beginning in a relationship that may have a very strong foundation. The Pentacles is all about that which is tangible. Again, you know, we do have Capricorn um, entering, uh, well, the Saturn entering the sign of Capricorn uh, at the end of, and that's an Earth sign, at the end of the month. Maybe that um, corresponds with it, or maybe the new moon in Capricorn in January corresponds with it. I believe that's the 16th of January. But whatever um, occurs, just know that you have this ability now sometimes you have to leave in order in order to have that new beginning you know you can't um have both at the same time at least not in a very effective way and then for the shadow work card i got the four of wands and this is the card of a happy home and you see that they have that it's funny that they have the woman on the on the white horse instead of the man it's like he's on the on the uh, on the ground and she's like the like the white knight um and this deck is very feminine oriented or maybe it's uh i was gonna say feminist it's not really it seems like very girly girl but that i thought that was an interesting reversal but um what i would say about that uh, for shadow work is what I, what is your idea or ideal concept of what makes for a happy marriage and marriage being a committed relationship. Does it have to fit a fairy tale or can it be imperfect? Can you disagree with that person without being the end of the world and without it getting vicious? These are questions to ask. Some people are what I would call too idealistic. They are, and it's unrealistic. They're unrealistic about what relationships are about, and they will break up with a person if the per they think it's disrespectful if the person um, gets angry at something that they did or that they said. You know, whenever the person expresses some kind of emotion that they find unpleasant, and yes, of course. There are some times when people express themselves in very destructive ways. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about anything that feels uncomfortable. We, when you are in it for the long haul, and this is like the long haul because it's something that has legs. It's, it's foundational. It's, you're, going to, you're going to make mistakes also, and you want to be forgiven, and you have to do the same. You have to be able to see the goodness in that person and what their intention was, even if they did not express themselves as artfully as they should have. So um, even though I mentioned that disclaimer at the beginning and I, and I talked about relationships with physical abuse and emotional abuse, emotional abuse isn't any time that somebody expresses anger to you and you feel like they are disapproving of you. That is when, that is, is a teach, I was going to say a teachable moment, but actually all of our tough times in relationships can signal to us what is very important in, in our lives altogether. And, um, 
I had to plug in my camera. So I think that's really important for me to say for some reason because I didn't expect to say that. But I think it's very important because as Sagittarians, we are in love with freedom. And there are some people who will use any fl perceived flaw in another person as an excuse to walk. And that can lead you into situations where you're constantly, and, and it can be because they are very easily disillusioned, but those are the times to really examine what is your concept of what a marriage is supposed to be like. And if, you, and if you're really um, being realistic about it, if you're expecting too much from any one person. I, I think sometimes that's kind of um, an unconscious way of keeping yourself from, from intimacy and committing to somebody. So just putting that out there. Okay, Sagittarius. Well, have a great rest of 2017. Take care. Bye.